Welcome back. In this final video for section 29 of the RV10 build, you'll see two builders reach a state of mental decay and physical exhaustion, finishing sections 29 and 30. Success. Enjoy part two of the sh show. Alrighty, I am excited. Uh, we're actually riveting again. I feel like it's been, I don't know, a good month or so uh, since I've actually set any rivets or bucked any rivets. Getting these riveted together. So uh, these six rivets here, six rivets on that side. So we're gonna get to it. I'm excited, we're back to riveting again. Let's go. Good, you'll like this tool that I made. It's actually a really cool tool. This allows me to use this yoke, which normally is not intended to be used with four settings. So it allows me to get deep because that's really hard to get to. And um, real good looking rivets. Wow. Fantastic rivets. My wife thinks I'm smart. I'm recording that. <laughs> that's really clever. Yeah, rivets look great. Like the top of the rivets, um, not scuffed or anything. Can confirm. Those look, look awesome. Fantastic. Today was a very productive day. Basically all the all the side rivets done other than that bottom run there. Um, same thing on the other side as well. I know the front one, I am gonna have to use Amanda to get those started. I don't think I'll be able to reach all the way around and really, again, don't wanna run the risk of bending it. Uh, but I think the instructions say to start from the bottom, then work out from there. So I'm not sure. Um, all I know right now is I'm gonna call it quits, go to bed, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Alrighty, quick little update. You'll notice the garage is a bit of a disaster. <laughs> There's stuff all over there. Anyways, garage is an absolute disaster. Uh, I've not been recording. I, at this point here, I'm struggling. I'm three SD cards deep. I know I'm gonna have a lot of footage to go through later. Uh, it is very understandable why there's very little content on this section on YouTube. Um, so, I, I'm at that weird trade-off where I, I want to film, I want to get in-depth shots, uh, but doing that adds probably 30% to the build time of whatever I'm doing, moving tripod around and getting shots. So, in lieu of that, in this section here, which has to do with these big old weld mints, um, I want to go over some of the lessons learned so far. Um, again, I'm not gonna have any footage of me doing things here, but something I wish I would have known ahead of time. Uh, number one, take a look at Pilot Rhino's video. Um, I totally ripped off his video and uh, used his method here. Um, so I'm not gonna go into detail on how it's used. I want him to get views for putting his content out there. So take a look at his video. I think it's build video number three for section 29. So take a look at that. I used it for getting bolts out very, very handy. Um, some other stuff that I used. Um, at the bottom section of the weld mitt, there is a really, really, really hard to get to that one there. Uh, you'll see where the scuff marks are. I'll probably hit that with paint later on. Um, but the bolt sits right inside of there and it perfectly sits to where you cannot, or at least with this, my weld mitt here, with the welds that they put in there, I could not get a wrench on there. So um, I went ahead and just totally destroyed a really cheap socket and that was what worked for me. Uh, I was not churning it with this. I was actually churning, I was just holding it in location with this. This held fine just for getting things tightened to match drill. So that held fine. And then I ended up just using on this side, uh, just turning the uh, the nut on this side, which meant the other side could stay stationary. Um, the other things I've done here. So I've modified a couple of sockets. Um, in his video, he mentioned picking up one of these guys here and not being able to get it to fit. He was correct there, um, but what I did is I found, I, I purchased this and also purchased some cheap Harbor Freight sockets. And you'll notice a couple of them are shorter. Ground them down to the, um, basically the max size that it would be to be able to still slip inside of there, slip into the nut on the inside. It worked totally fine. So uh, you can use this, uh, but you do have to destroy some sockets. But I think this was $8 for the full set. We can afford that, that's fine. Um, what else did I learn here so far? Um, in regards to getting the bolts inside of here, the first one I absolutely struggled uh, getting these bolts in on the first one that was over there. So I had to follow the instructions, use bow lube, uh, and still had to tap them in. Not super heavy, but there was some resistance tapping them in, and I found out the reason. Uh, the reason was because these are all full of powder coat when you receive them. So on the second one, I went through and initially actually scraped out that powder coating, found the proper drill size for each one, and just ran the drill through it, got rid of that powder coating, uh, and these ones went through much, much easier. Uh, I think three went in very easy, and then the one in the corner, the bottom corner, uh, was a little bit more tricky uh, to get in, and I cannot get an angle to show you. Uh, you have to believe me, it's the very, very bottom corner, closest to me, furthest to the floor. Uh, that was hard to get to. So the way I got to it to get it hammered in there was I took this off, double offset uh, rivet attachment. You could use any tool you could probably find. Um, anyways, I was able to snake it through, snake it through one of these holes and it lands on top. I cannot get an angle for you, but it ends up landing on top of the, uh, ends up landing right on top of the bolt that you're trying to get to and just tap it in real gently. Okay, and the last gotcha that I wanted to get to, and again, this is just in regards to getting this initially fit in here to do any match drilling. They have you use, the way I interpreted the plans, you end up using these self-locking lock nuts, but my understanding is you can't use them over and over again. So instead of that, what I would recommend doing, if I was doing this again, I would buy more of these uh, castellated nuts because these have no resistance to them uh, to back them off. I don't need them to self-lock because I'm gonna take it off after match drilling. So I only had two of them, unfortunately. Uh, I would need to buy a third. So I ended up having to use one of those self-locking nuts. So my plan right now is just to replace that nut and replace that bolt because it interferes with the threads to hold on. So I'm, I have a feeling that that bolt's gonna be shot at the end of this. Uh, comment down below if I can reuse it uh, so other people would know. But if I was doing this again, I'd make sure to have those castellated nuts. What you're gonna want, those of you who are getting to this portion, uh, you may ask, what do I need? Uh, you're gonna need, those were the AN310-4. You're gonna need three of those. And then you're gonna need one 
of the AN310-5s. And that dash five goes in the bottom corner, pain in the butt one. And that should work well. Uh, preserve your threads and not have to replace hardware later on down the line. And the only other gotcha here, um, which Ryan mentions in his video as well, I think, uh, but is uh, you will have to do further fit, fitting uh, work with the grinder. I use a little tungsten bit on a, a Dremel to kind of round that out and just keep test fitting over and over and over again uh, to get it to fit. Uh, so it does take a little bit of trial and error. You'll see mine here. Looks great. I'm happy with it. Don't have any excessive gaps or anything, so we're good there. Uh, but you do have to do some some fitting work on the uh, the holes there. Uh, I think that is everything. Yeah. So I uh, hope this is helpful. Sorry for not getting much footage here, uh, but again, drowning in footage already. I know I'm going to have too much to put out there. I'm going to delete so much, uh, so much of my footage I've already recorded. Uh, but hopefully, this is helpful. And next time you see me, we'll have either we'll either be working on side skins or figuring out something else. So we'll see you then. Alrighty, um, jumping ahead real quick to section 30, uh, just knocking that out real quick, which is the uh, steps. So you'll see I still do not have the front skins um, riveted on yet. Still waiting on my uh, build partner to not be busy. Uh, but no, we're uh, jumping ahead wherever I can, just doing knocking these out. So. Uh, on the topic of section 30 steps, they're pretty straightforward as, as long as you take a look at the RV10 wiki page. So take a look at that community page. There's some great callouts on it. Uh, one of which is the invisible skin uh, that this certain section calls out. Not going to go into too much detail. I know this video is probably very long already. Uh, but just follow the wiki page and you'll be set. Alright, so I know I'm not documenting a whole bunch of stuff here with the steps, um, but wanted to hit key key components so one key component i did choose to go with the step bushings i believe they're from is it tcw yeah from tcw i think the theory with the step bushings is with this thin wall tubing um, and having that bolt through it and clamping down on it over time as you're putting weight on it uh, it is not supported on the inside keeping that nice and round so i did not get it on video but you maybe can see on camera there is a step bushing way inside of there, uh, which I have lined up here um, inside with the, uh, lined up with my holes there. So um, just follow the instructions uh, that it came with. I'm gonna give you that in there. Hopefully this helps to not have loose steps in the future. I am not going to be doing access panels. Um, I just I just followed the plans. Um, the plans state uh, to use a long number 30 drill bit um, and work it uh, out the bottom skin and then also out of the, in the other direction uh, into the baggage floor, and now you know exactly where that bolt lies. So in the future, if I do have uh, loose bolts, I'll know where they are. I know it'll be a pain to get to. I understand there's a side panel that's gonna get in the way. Um, I know it could be a pain in the future, but having those holes already there, I can enlarge them and get to the bolt there if I need to outsize or whatever the case may be. Um, I just don't feel like it's worth spending the time building an access panel uh, for a problem that didn't exist yet, and a problem that hopefully is solved with that there. So, anyway, uh, that's where I'm at. Um, the reason why I'm wiping this so intently here, uh, I did fill it with uh, boiled linseed oil, sloshed it around all over. Uh, so now I'm gonna actually go ahead and get this scuffed up. I'll get it primed, and then we'll get it installed. Um, again, probably not gonna get this on camera, but I will show you the end result that I'm shooting for, uh, which is the left step. The left step I did earlier today. Uh, left step is right there. So I'm happy. It looks great. Um, and then inside, it actually surprisingly did not get really scuffed up at all. A little bit, a little bit scuffing, but the primer is still on it, which is surprising for self etch. I did have it in the sun all day baking, so maybe it's the uh, the Phoenix oven um, that uh, made it nice and baked on. But I'm happy with it. Turned out well. My measurement was spot on. Um, so other side as well should be spot on. Yeah. So just have to do some scuffing, priming. We can get it on there and then I believe this section is done before the previous section is even finished. <laughs> so anyhow, we'll get to it. All right, quick little status update. Uh, I was able to mount the second step. So now we have two steps installed. I've prepped this front area. I've already done all the mat drilling for um, the big weldments which are up there. Um, but did all the mat drilling, done all the process required. I think it's fine to do that. I felt confident uh, moving ahead and at least getting this front portion riveted together. Uh, it's far enough away from the front end where it, it should not interfere with not having this, this front section riveted yet, especially with the bottom end already being locked in in place along, uh, along this bottom edge. So I went ahead and already did touch up work on them. 
with regular Rust-Oleum uh, semi-gloss white, which I think matches absolutely perfectly with the powder coat. The front end, uh, well, just got a little bit scratched up for moving it in and out, um, especially widening the holes in the bottom skin. Um, they look great. That Rust-Oleum semi-gloss white matches perfectly. Um, so these are ready to rock, ready to go in. Um, so we'll see what I get to next. For now, I got a hungry boy who's waking up, so I'm gonna go feed him and we'll come back later. I found her. I rescued her from her office. Priorities. We're finally doing what's most important in our house. Most important? Yeah, build the damn plane. <laughs> okay, good. I was five Mississippis. Okay, the next one, give me three North Carolinas. <laughs> One North Carolina, two. <laughs> that's too much. Okay, uh, four Washingtons. Okay. Is my hair that long? Ew! Yes. Are you using your feet to move it? Were you just literally using your feet to move my hair? I use my shoe. My shoe is clean. No, it is not. I just cleaned them in the sink. <laughs> Alrighty, so quick check-in on landing gear weld mints. They are in. Uh, did not get any of it on video. <laughs> it took place over the last two nights. Uh, it would have just been me watching me struggle and cuss and drop washers and have to pick them up with my long needle nose pliers and fumble my way through this. But it's totally doable. You will find that you will, I've already started putting tools away. Um, you'll end up taking every tool out that you have <laughs> and using them all, every kind of extension. I mean, I. I had everything out. I used all my extensions, all, everything uh, to make it happen. Happy with how they turned out, so next step is going to involve putting in the floor pan, so we'll get to it. Also, side note, uh, don't be a dummy and put that right there, that little long bar there, the little uh, side support dealio rib. Don't put that in uh, before the floor pans go in. The instructions also show it that way that you should not put that in before doing the floor pan. Uh, but I got ahead of myself and thought, you know, there's probably no harm in putting that in. There is harm. Uh, if you put that in, you cannot get your floor pan to fit inside of there because it will interfere with it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out all 20 or so of these rivets along the skin here. We'll get that out of there and then we'll actually go ahead and get the floor pan in. Uh, but that's drilled out. Now I'm ready to proceed uh, following the plans. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get this put in here and get it riveted in place. Section 29 and section 30 are complete. Uh, happy with how it turned out. I know this has probably been a long video or a series of videos. Uh, jarring in footage. Probably keep saying that on video. Uh, but I'm happy. You'll notice it is on a stand. The stand is pretty simple. Um, I cut down a couple of these wooden sawhorses. Uh, just cut them down. Use the scrap legs on the inside just for added security. Um, and then, yeah, everything is screwed together. Each of these have four wheels. So theoretically, if I need to get under there and do any work, I could remove a sideboard. I think the sideboard is mainly just there to kind of hold it in place. But if I lock all of them, I could remove one of these sideboards and get under there, do any kind of tinkering that I need to do under the uh, belly of the plane. So um, I knew, I'm happy, happy with how it turned out. Next video will be section 31, uh, which will not be nearly as big of a job, it looks like. Uh, compared to section 29. So, anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you just want to say hi, say hi down in the comments down below, and we'll see you in that next one. Adios.